we have a list of values. We need to check each cell to determine if the items from the list are in the cell. When we find matches, we need to list them horizontally. We're going to start off by highlighting, going up to the Name box, and we're going to type a name for that range, Enter. Now, if I test it, that range is called List. Now, our goal is to match these items in any one given cell. Now, when we're looking at a larger text string and we need to find subtext strings, the perfect function to use, well, there's two of them. You can either use Find, which is case sensitive, or Search, which is not case sensitive. I'm going to use Search. Now, in the Find Text argument, we're going to put the entire list of all the items we're looking for. Now, we just put six items into Search. So that means search is going to deliver six answers, comma, and we'll look within this text. Now what search does is it counts left to right, and it's 10 characters in where that item is found, and that one's something like 40. So what search is going to deliver is when it finds one of these, it's going to deliver the position within this larger text string. So close parentheses, and when I hit the F9 key, there it is, 10 and 43. We're interested in this array that has six values and the position where there's a number. Control Z, so now we use is number. Close parentheses, and when I F9, now we have trues where it found one of the items. Now we can filter this list using the resultant array of trues and falses. Control Z, one of the amazing new Office 365 functions, filter. There's our list, comma, include. Those trues and falses will work. Now, because this is vertical, when I hit Enter, it spills vertically. But what do we want? We want it to spill horizontally. Now, notice the formula below the top cell is always going to be grayed out. The formula doesn't really live there. It's just spilled there. The formula lives in the top cell. So we edit in the top cell. And now we can use an old school array function, transpose. That'll take that vertical range and make it horizontal. Now when I Control Enter, that is exactly what we want. Now because the formula lives there and not there, we can simply copy it down. And that is amazing. It accomplished our goal of finding all the items from this list in any given cell and spelling it horizontally. All right, here's bonus formula number one. To make the label at the top dynamic, we're going to use the if function. And inside of the if in logical test, we'll use counta, which counts how many cells are not empty. When it gets to this column here, it'll be 0. Now, the cool thing about the if function logical test is count on might get the number 4, 2, 3, whatever the number, as long as it's not 0, the if function will interpret it as true. So that's our logical test. Then value of true, results, and that's our formula number incrementer as we copy to the side to give us 1, 2, 3, and so on. And then value of false will be double quote, double quote, which is how we show nothing in a formula. Control Enter, copy it to the side. We'll assume there can only be four. Then if this goes away, that does two. Now Control Z. Now, bonus number two, let's add conditional formatting. And we'll assume that there's only four possible results. We'll highlight the whole range, Home Ribbon tab, Conditional Formatting, down to New Rule. We want Use a Formula to determine which cells to format, and then Format Values where this formula is true. And we want our formula to check when the cell is not empty. So we use the Not function, and then we use is blank. And we're going to use a relative cell reference. Now, the active cell in our highlighted range is the white one. So I have to use that cell and then hit the F4 key one, two, three times. Close parentheses, close parentheses. And if the cell is not empty, then we want to add outline. Click OK, click OK. And now, if we test it, that's working. Control Z. All right, bonus formula number three. This is the way we used to have to do it before filter. We ran that logical test, and then the value of true was double quote to show nothing. And then we had to run index. 
and the aggregate function to determine the correct row number as we copy the formula to the side. Control-Enter, copy it all the way to the side and down. Now I have a whole playlist of videos from the book I wrote called Control-Shift-Enter, which teaches all about these awesome formulas. All right, here's bonus number four. Notice we used a formula element two times. Anytime we have that kind of repeating, if we want, we can use the new Office 365 let function. It actually lets us define a variable inside the formula. So for the variable name, I'm going to say L, comma, the variable value will be list, comma, and then instead of using list, and actually that formula has to cycle through and pull all the values twice, but internally inside of let, it cycles through the values, gets them, stores them, and can reuse them. So now we can use L. Now actually this is probably kind of silly to use the let here, but perhaps on a larger data set that would have some benefit. Now I'm going to close parentheses, and now we can Control-Enter and then copy it down. All right, that was a little fun with the search function inside of Filter. We saw how to create this formula up here, and we did some conditional formatting. We saw the old school way, and we even saw let. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, if you want to learn more about either dynamic array formulas or old school array formulas, check out these playlists.